My name's Nadine Smith and I'm talking about our recent published systematic review on the measurement properties of pain coping tools for children and young people with neurodevelopmental disability. Why is pain coping important? Up to three out of four young people with cerebral palsy experience chronic pain at varying stages of their life, which is higher than the prevalence reported in the general population. For people with CP, prevalence of pain increases with age, severity of gross motor impairment and female gender. From research in people without cerebral palsy, we know that a biopsychosocial approach to the assessment and treatment of chronic pain is considered best practice. One of the key elements in a biopsychosocial approach is assessing coping strategies to deal with chronic pain, as these can be a focus for cognitive behavioural interventions. We know ongoing negative thoughts about pain are associated with less participation with family and friends and less attendance at school and work. If pain is assessed using a biopsychosocial model, we may be able to better identify people whose pain is not being managed well, and then potentially refer them for therapies that could be helpful, such as clinical psychology, occupational therapy and physiotherapy. Our systematic review had two aims. Firstly, to identify pain coping tools that had previously been used for young people with a neurodevelopmental disability. And secondly, to determine the measurement properties of the identified tools. And we use COSMIN to do this, which stands for the Consensus Based Standards for the Selection of Health Measurement Instruments. We did two searches of five electronic databases from inception to September 2021. Search one was to identify pain coping tools that had previously been used for young people with neurodevelopmental disabilities, and this search identified seven tools. Search two was to identify the assessed measurement properties of the seven tools. From search two, we found 44 studies assessing the measurement properties of the seven pain tools identified in search one. We pulled the measurement properties and graded the quality using a modified grade approach, after which we found only one of the tools had content validity for young people with a neurodevelopmental disability. This is the cerebral palsy quality of life teenager version the cerebral palsy quality of life teen, however, is a multi-dimensional quality of life tool and cannot be used as a standalone tool to assess pain coping. So our findings were that there are few feasible pain coping measures for young people with neurodevelopmental disability. Two tools have content validity for young people with chronic pain that don't have neurodevelopmental disabilities. And these were the fear of pain questionnaire and the Bath Adolescent Pain Questionnaire. Establishing measurement invariance for populations with a disability could be a future step for these tools. There were no tools that were developed with the input from children or families with complex communication needs or cognitive impairment, apart from the cerebral palsy quality of life team. This is the area for future research. If we want to ensure we have chronic pain measurement for all people with cerebral palsy, regardless of their cognitive, communication or functional abilities. Thank you.